Hey there YouTube, thanks for coming to Chess Openings Explained. I'm Nick Risco, your instructor for the night. And tonight our opening of choice is going to be the Tarash variation of the French Defense. So, hello everybody. Uh, got the YouTube chat pulled up here, gonna be taking questions as we go. If you have a question, just put it in. Try to get to it as soon as I can. So let's jump right into it. Okay. So we're gonna start off here with 1e4 and pawn to e6. And this is the French defense, and the most common move here is pawn to d4. If your opponent is going to give you the center, you might as well take it. And the idea of e6 is so black can go pawn to d5 and also fight for the center. And here there's a few different moves white can play. White can end up pushing and go into the advanced French. They can go knight c3 for the classical systems. Uh, they can annoy everybody and take on d5 and go into a boring French exchange. <laughs> um, or they have the move we're going to cover tonight, which is knight to d2, which has um, probably less theory than all the other lines, but still very fun to play. The ideas can be easier to grasp. And um, the main reason people would go knight to d2 is to avoid the, the winnower French, which is after knight c3, bishop to b4. Uh, black has this very annoying pin that normally forces white to double up their c pawns and uh, get, get some good initiative on the queen side. <clears throat> so we're going to start with knight to d2, and we're going to take a look at some of the different moves black has here. Uh, let's see, let's scroll down in my notes here. There are one, two, three, four, five different moves here. I guess we'll start off with pawn to a6. Uh, and this is the modern system. We're going to cover some of the uh, smaller sidelines. Let me turn off these annotations real quick. Um, so a6, the modern system. Uh, normally we'll see white just play normally with normal development. Knight g to f3. And black will strike in the center with c5. And this, this uh, c5 push is going to be very common from black. We're going to be seeing this in most variations. And uh, here white takes on d5, and the pawn will recapture. And here white can take on c5 and give black this isolated queen's pawn. So uh, normally this would be a disadvantage for black, but it's you know, too early in the game. There's so many pieces on the board. It's hard to tell if this is going to be an advantage or disadvantage. Uh, we're going to go knight to b3, just hit this bishop. The bishop has to move to safety, so it goes to b6. <clears throat> White's going to continue with regular development um, all the way down. Uh, bishop to g5, trying to get black to trade the queens, and once they do, king takes is fine. With the queens off the board in this open position, um, having the king out in the center isn't, isn't too bad. Uh, bishop to g4, looking to possibly take on f3. Rook h to e1, and now the king is ready to drop back to f1 with check. Knight g to e7 to block this idea of the check, and this position is pretty balanced for both sides. Uh, blacks are going to have to watch out for this isolated queen's pawn being a target in the future, but that's going to be a little ways down the road. We also have, back on move three, uh, Grimard's line. So I mentioned this, um, I think it was a week or two ago when I did my Nimzovich lecture, um, where in the Nimzovich defense, you can end up transposing to this opening here. Uh, so knight c6 um, definitely has some surprise factor behind it. Normally, like I said, black is going to be going for this c5 push, but here after knight to c6, that's no longer possible. So what are black's ideas here? Well, after knight to f3, they go knight f6, and we see pawn to e5 and knight to d7. Those moves there are pretty standard for, for French openings. Now we see knight to b3, just reinforcing d4, opening the line up for our bishop. We'll see uh, normally pawn to a5. They can also go bishop e7, and then after bishop b5, there's a5 and a4, but this transposes right into the main line, where after bishop to b5, there's normally going to be knight a7 with the idea that you know, you're hitting the bishop, uh, you don't want white to be able to take and double up the pawns. So we'll see bishop to d3, 
not wanting to have to uh, open up the A file too early or give up bishop pair. Uh, B6, just solidifying the pawn. And after it castles, there is pawn to C5. Pawn to C4, both sides are trying to fight for the center, adding a lot of tension. Bishop to B7, queen to E2, some more standard development from both sides. Um, these moves should be pretty natural. Rook D1 being prepared for any opening on the files. You'll see knight C6 bringing it back to the center. CD5, ED5, and here the position again is pretty equal. White pretty much just has that first move advantage. Uh, so that is the gist of the Guimard's line. I see a lot of people saying, uh, you know, we're, we're not going over more of the critical moves. Um, but that's just because these are more of the sidelines. I want to make sure we can focus on the main lines uh, here in this opening. Okay, aside from knight to c6, there is also bishop to e7. Also having a little bit of surprise factor behind it. Because normally black is going to try and go c5 or knight f6. Uh, you normally don't see bishop e7 this early, and this is the Morezovich defense. Uh, here we will see white continue with the normal knight g to f3. Knight f6, again we see the e5 and knight d7 moves, and bishop to d3. Uh, we're noticing that this bishop is coming to d3 a lot. The knight that's on f6 is being kicked by the pawn and going to d7 a lot. So these are going to be common ideas throughout the rest of the night. Uh, and here we will see... Uh, black go pawn to c5 and pawn to c3 just to solidify in the center. Now if black takes, white can recapture with the pawn maintaining strong center. Knight to c7. Castles, and this is going to be very similar to the main line we're going to discuss tonight, but the difference between this and what we're going to go over later is the knight is on e2 instead of f3. And now we see both sides fight for space on the queen side. a5, a4. Castles by black, rookie one by white, uh, takes in the center, knight b4 coming in, hitting the bishop. You just move that bishop back to b1. You don't really want to go to c2 and allow black just to trade here because this light square bishop is one of white's better pieces. Um, you don't want to keep the dark square bishop when your, dark, or when your pawns are on the dark squares in the center. You want to keep that light square bishop, keep up the attack. So that's why you go all the way back to b1 and now the knight really doesn't have a purpose here on b4 so we'll see black move it back towards the center try to regroup and white does have an edge here just because it's kind of hard to see where black is supposed to pile up uh, but this is also a way to play uh, if you're looking for some surprise factor white may not be prepped here uh, is the black king in danger uh, yes so uh, black may need to watch out for some greek gifts here but uh, I believe with the bishop on e7 and queen on d8 behind it, there should be enough, um, enough pieces on g5 to stop some of these. Um, but yeah, after like knight f1, maybe knight g3, um, black may need to worry about some Greek gift sacrifices. But here, uh, they, they don't work out uh, just because g5 is protected. Okay. Uh, all right, so after looking at the Morozovich defense, we will go back. Um, let's see, a big sideline uh, is pawn takes on e4. This one gives black uh, really good chances. This transposes to the Rubenstein French after knight takes e4. And I feel like that opening kind of deserves its own course. Maybe in the future we'll do a chess openings abridged for it, but... Um, I feel like that one just has too much in it for us to fully cover tonight. So we won't go over pawn takes. And that leaves us with the two main moves here. Uh, after knight to d2, there are two different uh, ways black can play other than all those sidelines we just looked at. There is pawn to c5 and there is knight to f6. So first we will look at pawn to c5, which is an open system for black. This position does normally open up for both players and can lead to some very sharp positions. And actually both of these moves, c5, c5 and knight to f6, both lead to sharper positions. Uh, so after pawn to c5, uh, let's see, white has two different ways they can play. We'll start off looking at... Um, well, we've been playing knight f3 a lot for the, for the sidelines. So 
uh, we have knight g to f3. And now here, black can either play um, c takes d4, which we will continue with in just a second, or they can play knight to f6, and this will transpose into the, Mare uh, yeah, the Morozovich variation we just took a look at. Um, so I'll just show the transposition here. And you'll notice we end up in the same exact position where the knight is on f3. Uh, bishop is on d3. This bishop's on e7, where white will have that slight edge. Uh, but the way black should probably play this is c takes d4, and now white will take on d4 right away with their knight. Knight can go to f6, putting pressure on the pawn on e4, uh, and instead of protecting it with something like bishop to d3, white does better just by trading it off the board. Queen takes, and now knight to b5. Don't worry, it is protected by the bishop. And it's getting ready to go to c c7, where there's this monster fork with the queen, king, and rook. So black needs to defend against this. What better than knight a6? And now we see knight to c3. Um, the knight isn't really going to, to have a shot at landing on c7 anymore, so it just comes back to c3, getting a tempo off the queen. And once the queen drops back to d8, we have something like pawn to a3, stopping black's pieces from coming to b4. So we'll see bishop e7, black's got a castle. Queen to f3, probably putting some pressure on b7 here. Might be looking to slide over to g3 in the future. We see a knight to c7, just bringing it towards the center. Bishop to d3. Uh, and here we will see knight c to d5, again, just moving it towards the center. And instead of trading the knights, this trade is probably not going to be beneficial to white uh, after queen takes they're offering a queen trade it's hard to see how white gets an edge here with this knight on d2 so instead of trading off the knights and having that knight on d2 stuck there we usually see um sorry not that knight we see the knight on d2 come up to e4 getting ready to recapture on c3 or the knight on c3 capturing on e4 normally there's the the capture on e4 I know I just said the, the knight, um, but white does better taking with the bishop here, um, putting pressure on this diagonal, uh, and we see a trade. Bishop f6 hitting the queen, and queen f3 here, pretty equal position. Black's going to have to worry about a little bit of pressure on b7, but not too much other than that. Both sides will enjoy an open board with bishop pairs. Okay, so that covers the knight to f3. Now, the main way white plays this, I think the most popular move, is e takes d5. And this can lead to some very sharp positions after queen takes. Queen takes d5 is the critical line. There's also e takes d5, but after e takes d5, uh, I think some natural development for both sides should just lead to an equal position where black will have this isolated queen's pawn, and it's going to remind us of some of the, I believe it was the modern variation that we looked at earlier. But we'll look at queen takes d5 because this is the critical line. We see knight to f3, this is very common. c takes d4, and we temporarily give up this pawn. We will get it back very shortly. We go bishop c4 first instead of um, probably another natural move is knight to b3, looking to get at it right away. But uh, it's better to go bishop c4, getting ready to castle and hitting the queen first because you can go knight b3 in the future. The queen normally goes to d6, and after castles, knight f6, now we will see the move knight to b3. Uh, here, Knight to c6 to defend the pawn is normally played, but it should be noted black cannot go to e5. This is a big mistake. Uh, and probably one of the, the cleanest ways to take advantage of this is starting with rook to e1. Black has made a lot of queen moves. They've made a lot of pawn moves. So their king has not castled yet, so tactics do exist. You just put the rook on the e-file. It pins this pawn, so it's not really protecting d4. And... Let's just see what happens if black tries to defend. They can go knight c6 trying to defend, but again, because this pawn is pinned, we can just keep adding more and more attackers. So the move bishop f4 is possible here. 
getting ready to capture. Now let's say black keeps trying to defend with knight d7. Well here, the move knight to g5 might look strange at first, but you're just threatening to take on f7 and win some material. Let's say they go knight to d8 to defend against this fork. After knight to d8, you know, this knight was protecting d4, but now that it has moved, d4 is falling. So after knight takes, bishop to e7, you know, you don't really want to uh, try and take with the queen. <laughs> You're going to lose it. So we see bishop to e7, and now knight to f5 is going to trade off more pieces. White's going to have a very strong initiative here. Uh, so we see like a queen trade and rook d1. And let's say black is careless and takes on f4. They're already facing mate with uh, rook to e7. And after a couple forcing moves here, we will see that it is going to be mate with two knights and a rook. Now e takes f4 is not the best move, but you know, that's, that's if black is being careless. Um, but this position here is already like plus four, um, plus four and a half, just because white has this initiative and black's just wasted the time and not castled. So again, e5, terrible blunder, can't do it. You have to go knight c6 if you're trying to hold on. And here we'll just see the knight's trade. We'll see knight takes d4. Uh, better to go with the queenside knight. Takes and takes. Now we open up the kingside for the queen in the future if we so desire. Pawn to a6. Now this is stopping any knight to b5 ideas that we saw earlier with the knight going to c7. It's also stopping any bishop checks. And they're probably getting ready to play pawn to b5, just kicking the bishop away. We see rook to e1 just getting on the half open file. Very nice development here. Queen to c7, hitting the bishop. We have to protect it, so we just drop it back to b3. Now black is finally getting some of that time to develop. After bishop d6, there is a threat on h2. So we will see pawn to h3, just moving it out of the way. No need to worry about it. And now castles. After castles, this position is pretty even. I'll give a few more moves here. Um, and I really don't know what my personal evaluation of, of this line is. Um, after bishop to g5, looking to capture and double the pawns, open up the king side. Uh, black does like to insert this bishop h2 check and force the king to the corner. I'm not really sure why this is necessary. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I don't completely understand it. Um, but probably just going bishop f4, looking for this trade of bishops. Now, again, white put the bishop on g5, looking to capture on f6. So they capture on f6 instead of on f4. They, they do want to double up black's pawns. And now after something like queen h5, uh, king h8, this position, um, all the computers I've checked with are saying it's equal. The theory says it's equal, but I, I find this position to be rather unclear for both sides. So if uh, there's anyone watching who has more experience in these kinds of <clears throat> excuse me, in these kinds of positions, feel free to drop it in the comment section below um, once this is uploaded to YouTube. But this is probably the most critical line in the open variation. And that looks like that should cover most of the open system lines. I don't think I'm forgetting anything here. Uh, so we're going to move on into the, what is it, the closed system with knight to f6. Let's see, knight to f6. So the move here, white just goes pawn to e5. Uh, again, we've seen this move a lot tonight. This is going to be very common when the knight goes to f6. You just play pawn to e5, hit that knight, force it to go to d7. White has the move bishop to d3, just developing on the diagonal. Again, this is probably the most natural square in the Tarash. And we see black hit with c5. Uh, now the point of developing the knight to d2, um, this does not transpose to the advanced variation. Um, and the reason is because the bishop is already on d3. In the advanced variation, that's not always clear. And in the advanced variation, you'll normally see white put the knight on f3, uh, where here in the main line of the closed system, we're going to look at knight to e2. So a few little subtleties here um, between the tarash and the advance. But we do see pawn to c3 defending d4 with the same idea as the French advance. 
Knight to c6, again, very common French idea, hitting the pawn on d4. And here really comes the main difference um, between the Tarash and something like the advance, um, is we have this move knight to e2, which may seem very, very strange at first. Uh, it's not very often we see the knight just go to e2 in our king's pawn opening. Uh, normally that knight goes on to f3. But um, here, uh, the idea is that with d4 being attacked, you want to be able to bring the knight on d2 to f3. That way you can get another defender on d4. Uh, you can't you know, bring it to b3 to defend because you'll run into pawn c4, forking the knight and bishop. So you go knight e2 for probably the sole purpose of just bringing the other knight to f3. Uh, I will back it up one move here, though. There is another way that black can try playing this is pawn to b6. Now this one's a little bit more dubious, uh, still looks completely playable. Uh, where they just go b6 and try and, uh, you know, if white ever captures for some reason, they can recapture with pawn um, and try and go bishop to b7. I feel like black's light square bishop gets misplaced here, but when you're playing the French, um, you know, your, your light square bishop is crying most of the time because it's shut in. So this is at least an attempt to try and improve it. We will see knight to e2 again, just developing, getting ready to castle. Bishop to a6, which is a nice move by black. So like I said, this light square bishop normally struggles in the French. Here, black is making an effort to trade it off. So bishop a6, knight a6, and castles will leave white with a happy king. And knight to c7, um, maybe trying to go to b5 in the future. Uh, it's hard to tell where this knight is going to go, really. Um, knight to f4, just putting some pressure on uh, probably e6. There are some, some variations where uh, if black is careless, the knight can sacrifice itself on e6, but here it will not work because the knight also supports. Uh, and here, uh, there's two moves by, by black. Black could opt to try and keep it closed with something like pawn to c4. But queen to g4 will leave white with a little bit of pressure on the king side, making it harder for the uh, black to develop. So they're going to have to go something like b5, and after b3, go g6, just to uh, keep their um, <laughs> pieces from being attacked, um, and try and go for this queen side push. Um, again, so just like last week, um, people are suggesting moves in the chat. Uh, I am seeing them, but please try and have a move number and a variation that it's in. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier for me to answer your guys' questions. Uh, so we'll look at bishop to e7 here instead of pawn to c4. They leave the tension in the center. Uh, again, queen to g4, hitting g7. Pawn to g6 is going to save the pawn. And knight to f3. And this knight is going to probably go to g5, put some pressure. Uh, can't go right now, obviously, because of the queen and bishop. But just a couple ideas for the future. Uh, in here, black can either play pawn to c4, again trying to shut it down, but uh, white gets a, a pretty strong attack after h4, and if they go b5 trying to break, it's just a little too slow. This knight comes to e2, and now the knight on f3 is getting ready to jump into g5. Uh, the other option for black is to try and go h5 and hit the queen. Uh, this is more active, probably a bit better. Um, queen to h3. Pawn to c4, now shutting it down. But the idea is you've misplaced the queen, not really helping out on g5 anymore. So now you can go um, have some more play on the queen side. White will go a4 to stop the idea of b5. Black goes pawn to a5. And now we might get pawn to g4 trying to break through. Uh, black cannot take because it will hang the rook uh, with a crushing, crushing position. So you'll normally see h4. Um, and this will be uh, your starting position, but white does have a significant advantage here. Okay, um, someone was asking about bishop to c2 instead of taking on a6 here, which is a very good comment. Uh, after bishop to, to c2, there is knight to c6, uh, which has to be considered. Looking at this position, um, it kind of seems that black's bishop actually 
has a purpose on this diagonal. Um, and with the knight coming to c6, I kind of feel like we missed our opportunity to misplace black's pieces. Once we capture on a6 and the knight recaptures, the knight cannot come forward, so it has to go back to reposition. And I feel like this may just be the reason why they take. Um, why they take on a6. Um, just so that way this knight is a little misplaced, black has to spend that extra move or two to put this knight in a better spot. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the main position. So again, b6 was just a sideline, but knight c6 is the main move here, putting pressure on d4, and we see knight to e2. After knight to e2, normally we will see black take on d4. Why exactly this moment? Again, I'm not entirely sure why this is the exact moment, but I know black is wanting to get this bishop out and castle soon, um, at least after the trade, then um, it's not like white is ever going to have any ideas of taking, although that may not be wise anyway because the pawn on e5 is weak. So again, another position where um, you know, if you know exactly why on this move, uh, feel free to drop it down in the comments. So c takes d4, c takes d4. You're not wanting to capture with the knight, very important, because after knight takes, there is knight takes e5, and you hang this center pawn, and now white does have the space to start maneuvering their pieces. So cannot take with the knight, you have to take with the pawn, and this was the entire idea of playing knight d2, was so that way you could play pawn c3 and recapture with the pawn. And here, uh, Again, a couple more alternatives for black. The main move here is pawn to f6, which we will look at in just a second. But I do want to mention queen to b6. Queen to b6 is another move that's very popular in the French with the idea of hitting d4. And um, yeah, queen b6 seen a lot in the French advance. Hitting d4, what are we going to do about it? Well, this is why our knight went to e2 earlier. Well, so that way after something like queen b6, the other knight can go to f3, and you have d4 completely defended by your knights. Your dark square bishop doesn't need to worry about coming to defend the center and giving up b2 because your knights are all over it. Now if you see pawn to f6, there's a capture capture, castles, bishop to d6, an active square for the bishop. And now normally white will play knight to c3 here. Um, black will castle, bishop to e3. Now this pawn, if black decides to take it, is poison because of knight to b5, hitting the bishop. And then you're also looking to go maybe rook to, to b1 here. So if they go like bishop to b8, saving it, there's rook b1, queen to a2, rook to a1, queen to b2, and you can just shuffle back and forth and at least get a draw this way. If you're not looking for the draw, then um, Rook to a4 is a move suggested by the engine. It's a little, um, a move that's a little bit out there, um, but the idea is bishop to c1, just hitting this queen more and more. So they cannot take on b2. It is poison, just because the queen is likely going to be trapped. So instead of going for the pawn, we will see bishop to d7, looking for development. Pawn to a3, just stopping the knight from coming in and hitting our bishop. We see bishop to e8, looking to possibly reroute to g6 or f7, maybe trying to open up the d7 square for our knight. We'll see knight to g5 hitting the weak pawn, and knight to e7 here. So we are leaving this position with the pawn hanging. So we should uh, always ask ourselves, what if white takes? Well, if white takes this hanging pawn, black has the tactic, bishop takes h2, king takes h2, queen takes e6, where black kind of opens up the position a little bit and it gets a lot of space under control on the king's side, trying to get the queen into the game. This gives black quite a bit of activity, so I would not recommend white taking this pawn um, on e6. Uh, instead, just normal normal moves like rook e1 are going to be fine putting it on this file. Uh, once this bishop moves, 
um, either you know d2 moving it back maybe it'll somehow get traded off on f4 um, then there's going to be more pressure on e6 you want to just keep it as a target for the long term okay so that is queen to b6 and i will also note that this queen b6 idea can also be played later on and transpose right back into those lines we just looked at um, I believe it was specifically on move 11. So I will point that out again in just a second when we get there. Uh, back to the main line, pawn to f6. This is a break known in the, in the French where uh, if you can't attack at the base of the pawn chain, you attack at the head of the pawn chain. And here, black is just trying to, to ruin white's center structure. So it would be best for white just to take with the pawn. Um, to, to do, there is a sideline here, but I think I'm going to save that for the very end. Um, to, to, to. So after pawn takes, knight takes, knight to f3, just um, opening up the path for the bishop, protecting the pawn, bishop to d6, castles. Uh, like I said, I'll uh, call it out, queen to b6 is playable here. This will transpose into the line where white just plays knight to c3. Okay, uh, I see a lot of people quoting Ben Feingold here, don't play f6, uh, but here f6 is completely fine. The uh, diagonal to check the king is blocked off by the knights. Um, is f4 a line? f4 is a line, actually. Um, I think, I don't know if it's here in this position, but there are ideas of white playing f4. I just didn't cover those in this lecture tonight because we do have some, some other sidelines that I wanted to look at that are probably more critical. And I think white has better chances um, without playing f4. But uh, yes, Charles Smith, f4 is an idea in some of these lines. Okay, we go back to castles. Like I said here, queen b6 is a move. Uh, the other sideline here is queen to c7. Putting some pressure on h2, if you're not careful with this knight, uh, you may lose a pawn. But there's no worries for white. You just go bishop to g5, getting that bishop off of the back row. This rook may come to c1 in the future. We'll see black castle. Bishop to h4, just jumping ahead of any you know, pawn h6 ideas. And now white, or sorry, black can play either knight h5, and we see like queen c2, h6, uh, bishop check and come back. Um, there's actually a couple moves going on here. Um, there's a thematic sacrifice, so I should also note this, taking on f3 is a move um, very thematic in the Tarash for black in the closed systems. Um, in some lines as early as move 14. Um, doo -doo -doo, and bishop h5, rook f8. So. Uh, we don't take the rook. If we take the rook, we do run into some trouble um, with bishop to h2. So black can go knight h5, try and go for a quick attack. Or they can also play the thematic e5 break, which is a break that black is going to try to go for to free up the position. This pawn I mentioned earlier is a weakness on e6. Um, so here, black is just trying to trade it off get it off the board, and open up this line for their bishop. Here we normally see pawn takes, knight takes. We see a trade of knights in the center. And now bishop to g3, which is another reason why bishop to h4 was played earlier. And here, probably one of the best ways to try and defend against this threat on h2 is just go bishop g3 and trade them off. Uh, and that's exactly what black does. They trade off on g3. Queen goes to b6, introducing some pressure. Queen to d2, defending. Bishop to d7. And here we end up in a, I guess, pseudo end game where it's pretty even. White just has that, you know, first move advantage. And here, this isolated queen's pawn is a big target. So, queen c7 is a line that black can try to play, can lead to some more energetic positions with attacks on the king's side. Uh, but if white survives, probably a little worse in the end game. Um, but queen b6 and queen c7 are not the only moves here. The main line is castles. Just kind of being flexible with your queen, seeing where it wants to go in the future. And we will see a nice bishop to f4. Now this idea 
uh, I have known from the exchange French, where white will take on d5 and then try and go knight e2 to go bishop f4 and trade off the dark square bishops. And the reason why white would want to do that is white's pawn here on d4 is on a dark square. And with this pawn on a dark square, there's you know really no need. Okay, I should probably phrase that better. But um, it's not like white needs to try as hard to control the dark squares uh, if they have this bishop on the board. It's okay if they trade it off. And then what's going to happen is black is going to be left with this light square bishop and their pawns on light squares. And then white is going to have this light square bishop and dark square pawn in the center. And that's usually what you want, your bishop on the opposite color of your pawns. That way your, your bishop won't be blocked in. I'm sure there's better ways to phrase that, but hopefully that all made sense. Here we will see black trade and knight to e4, which is a very nice move. Uh, this can be very sharp. And here it looks like white has two different ways to play. First, we will look at knight to e2. And this is the line I was talking about where there is an exchange sacrifice on f3. And it would do white well to just take it because it's, it's the material. You can't just give away a knight for free. And after knight g5, uh, we get a sharp position that we'll jump right back into. But I do want to take a quick look at queen to c1 because it is um, shorter. Uh, excuse me, a shorter line we can look through. But queen to c1, defending the knight. We see knight to g5. Knight takes, queen takes. This knight is attacked twice. But there is this very fun move here. Bishop takes h7 check. If the king takes, you have a knight takes e6, forking. Uh, if the queen takes on c1 here, you have knight f8 check. After king g8, you take the queen, they take your knight, and you have a material imbalance here where um, white has what is it, a rook and two pawns for a knight and bishop. So black can be quick to generate attacks because they have more pieces. But um, if you know white can always uh, defend against these attacks, they may do well because they have extra pawns that can turn into queens. So that is a pretty fun position that is equal for both sides. Um, but okay, back to 92. There is this exchange sacrifice. G takes f3, knight g5. And here... Uh, I believe the main move, or probably the most popular, is king to h1. Now I do have uh, Stockfish13 here suggesting pawn to f4 and kicking the knight, and then king g2, and then queen h4. But honestly, these lines looked um, a little sketchy to me for white. They, they worried me as a player. If I were given these positions, I'd be worried about my king's safety. Um, so I didn't look into them too much. I just focused more on king to h1 because it looked like the king would be safer. And here we see pawn to e5. Again, that, that nice break black has at their disposal to open up the position for their bishop to kind of trade off in the center. Um, it should be noted that taking on f3 is a mistake. Um, because of bishop h7, and if king takes, there is queen to d3, and white will get a lot of activity. They're going to have all their pieces developed. Um, you know, this rook isn't really doing anything in the corner, so white will enjoy a nice position there. If they go something like king to f7, well, white has just won a pawn on h7. Um, so back to e5, white normally takes. And then black takes on f3 first. This pawn on e5 is not going to be protected by anything soon, so it's better just to go to f3 and then hit e5 later. Uh, if, let's say, they go knight e5, there's knight g1 protecting f3. After queen f6, hitting it again, bishop to e2, and it's looking like white is holding on. So bishop to d7, good move. Um, if they go e6, trying to protect the pawn, uh, I have this marked as a slight mistake due to queen d4, and now white is going to get more development, um, getting the queen active. But bishop d7, queen takes d5, king h8, and I have this marked as an unclear position because even though white does have developed pieces, black does have pieces that are out there, and, um, you know, 
taking on f3 may look attractive after something like rook f8 and you just put everything on f3. So unclear position there. But knight takes f3 is the main move we're going to look at. Knight to g1, looking to trade off. This knight is attacked twice, so you cannot capture with your c knight. You have to capture with your f knight. After knight f takes e5, bishop to c2, saving the bishop. Pawn to d4. And here we see where um, black has this passed pawn, which is going to be what they're playing for. Um, but, I mean, white still has stuff here. They have some heavies. I mean, they're up. What is it in exchange for a pawn? I believe it's in exchange and a, uh, for a pawn. Where, you know, again, if white can survive, they should be better. But black does have this easy plan of pushing this pawn down the D file. See, so like bishop e4, bishop e6, and here I have an equal position. Okay, I did mention that there was a very fun sideline we are going to look at um, all the way back on move 9. So back to move 9, when f6 was played, uh, we just went over e takes f6, which is the main move. However, uh, one very fun sideline popping up is knight to f4. Uh, I really like this variation. I know other YouTubers have covered this move. I know that uh, they prefer this variation too. And I guess one of the ideas here is if they try something like queen to e7, trying to protect the e6 pawn. There's knight to f3, uh, f takes e5, d takes e5, knight takes e5, we trade knights on e5, and we end up with queen h5 check at the end, where here after knight to f7, you can't play pawn to g6 because you hang a uh, knight. So knight f7, white just castles, pawn to g6, kicking the queen out. You have queen to e2, hitting e6, pawn to a6, rook to e1. Uh, you know, there's no, no easy way for black to save this pawn. After bishop g7, um, white can even take on d5 because if black takes, there's mate. So... Very nice sideline here if they play queen e7. However, queen e7 is not the, the only move here. It is not forced. Black can let this pawn just kind of kind of sit there for now. And we see knight takes d4. This is really the only move for black here after taking. Or sorry, after knight of four, they have to take. So now we will see the critical move pawn, or sorry, queen to, to h5. You give up this pawn in the center, so you have to go for activity. If you don't go for activity, you're really just giving up a center pawn, which um, is a very important center pawn because it was protecting e5. So queen h5, check, and here g6 is a blunder. Uh, for those of you who do puzzle rush or puzzle storm, uh, this is a very common tactical idea in those kinds of tactics trainers is knight takes g6 you're hitting the rook and uh, if they move the rook out of the way you have knight checks for discoveries where you're threatening mates like this so they take the knight and then you win the rook so they cannot go g6 not a good idea here which leaves the only move king e7 which may not be intuitive for some people because you are blocking your dark square bishop. Here, the critical continuation is ef6, knight takes f6. Uh, I just want to point out that it is a very bad move if black takes on f6 with the king because of knight to d5 check. And now if they take the knight, there's queen h4 and you pick up the queen. So that is why the knight takes, it hits the queen, trying to get it out of here. And now we go knight to g6, this forking idea. Now here, black has to take the knight with the pawn. Um, let's see, what happens if they don't? If they don't, uh, I believe queen h4 is the response to all of them, except for king d7. It looks like so against king d7 there's knight e5 check 
king c7, queen h4, knight to c6, looking to trade off the knight, and then knight to f7 is going to uh, hit with you winning an exchange. Uh, and the reason why this would be less favorable than uh, losing the exchange in the main line is uh, after h takes and queen takes, this queen is kind of out of the game, whereas in uh, this line with king to d7 and chasing it across the board, the queen is still very much going to be in the game, uh, which is why this position would be losing for black and the other position equal. Uh, if they try and go king d6, queen e5 is going to win the game after something like king to c6. You can just take on h8 with the knight. Taking on d4 is also possible with the queen. And if the king goes to e8, well here there is queen h4, and you're getting ready to take on h8. So back to the main line. They should take because any king move is, leads to a losing position. Now queen takes h8, and black is down the exchange. Uh, we go king to f7. Just keeping an eye on all of our pieces, and it's pretty safe, actually. Uh, it looks like king, uh, the black king may not be safe, but white has no pieces really out there to attack it. Um, yes, there is this bishop eyeing g6, but other than that, really not much white can hit right away. We will see castles, pawn to e5, again this break opening up the position, knight to b3 opening up the line for our bishop, and black does well by trading off the pieces. Bishop to f5, again looking for trades. And bishop to g5, pinning, also looking to trade. After a move like bishop to c5, uh, it's very important that white does not go and trade the queens. If they try and uh, trade the queens, black, while an exchange down, is doing better because of these center pawns and has a very easy plan of pushing them all the way down the board. White does not want to allow black to just get away with that plan. They want to keep up and attack, so they should go queen to h3, moving it to safety, uh, keeping an eye on this f5 pawn. Black should go queen d7, protecting this pawn. And after a trade, we see king takes. Pawn takes is also possible, but it looks like this leaves white slightly better. It looks like they can try and get some play on the c-file. Bishop b6 and rook c3 are an idea, doubling up. Um, but king takes has been the most played move in this position. And now rook f to e1, trying to get the rooks into the game, putting pressure on these center pawns that are very dangerous for white. Uh, again, black is just going to try and push them down the board. Uh, so we see something like queen e6, again, just trying to solidify all the pawns. Uh, and then we see pawn to b4. It is a blunder if black takes. There is bishop takes b4, runs into queen h4, hanging the bishop, leaving white with a completely winning position. You can't be down an exchange and a bishop. It's just not going to be great. I guess it would just be down a rook. So we see bishop to b6 and queen to h4 check, and we'll see a lot of checking here on the king side with the queen trying to optimize the position White does have ideas of lifting the rooks and bringing them over, but with um, good play, black should just be fine and not be in too much of a worse position. It's, um, white's going to have to work really hard to get an attack to work, and again, black does have this um, pretty easy to understand idea of pushing the pawns all the way down the board. Uh, we do see the bishop come back to f6 to block the check. You honestly can't block with the queen. And you can't just go king down um, because of stuff like rook c1 and trying to take on g7, trying to, you know, skewer, win the queen. So you see bishop f6 come back, it's just more solid. Um, queen to h5, queen e7, we just see a bunch of these slow positional moves. And uh, here is um, a pretty equal position. Uh, depending on what engine you ask, it'll say white's better by plus, you know, half a pawn or plus a pawn and a half. But um, I think practically this is completely fine to play. Definitely a very, very fun sideline for white that has been starting to pop up more and more. 
And that is most of the theory there. I think that is everything in my notes. So we're going to open up the last 10 minutes here to any questions that the chat may have. Uh, any line, any position here in the Tarash French, I'll take any questions and we'll try and get to the answer. Okay, I'll scroll back through, see if anybody asked anything earlier. Okay, we see the London popping up, which is interesting. <laughs> see some people are asking about 1d4 these can pop up in 1d4 if you play 1d4 black plays pawn to e6 so let's see someone was asking about 1d4 i should just mention this is also possible if after e6 you play pawn to e4 then it can transpose but most people playing d4 on move one are going to play c4 in which it's not going to resemble most of these positions Okay, people are saying F3 or G4. I'm not sure what those are about. <laughs> Knight G F3, on what move, AP? On what move? Make sure you add move numbers. That way I know wh where you're talking about here. The Knight G F3 line, there is no Knight G F3 line. Although knight gf3 pops up in most of these lines. In the last position, in the last position, there was no knight for white. <laughs> we'll give AP a few seconds to figure this out. 3f3. I've never seen this move ever. It looks like it's been played by masters three times, but this is not the Tarash variation. That's not what this lecture is over, uh, but I'm curious about it. I think black can just take and then play e5, or maybe not e5, but queen h4 check uh, doesn't look too fun. I don't see how you're going to uh, save e4 here. Okay, AP has some moves in the chat for me. So 1e4, e6, d4, d5, knight d2, knight f6, e5, knight d7, c3. Wait, knight fd7, c3, c5, knight g3. I'm going to assume it's here with the knight on c6 and the knight going to f3. Um, so yes, this is a position, this was one that we transposed um, from in one of the sidelines. Let me see if I can find what, what line that was. Um, was it the Mor Morozovic? No. Actually it was. Where um, black just castles it looks like. Let's see. I'm pretty sure that's what it was, unless it was, no, it wasn't here where they exchange. So I'm pretty sure it was just a, that's just another transposition to the Morozovic line. What is my favorite line against the Tarash by Sandro Schock? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, so I normally play the Sicilian dragon against E4, and in those lines, there's always a thematic sacrifice on, C on C3, where you sack a rook for the knight. Uh, so I really like this line in the closed Tarash, where, let me see if I can find it. Where did it go? It was the main line, move 14. We're on knight e2. Black can just take on f3 and get the same sort of positional sacrifice. Um, those kinds of moves in chess are very appealing to me. So I would have to say here, um, in the main line after knight e2, this is my favorite variation. Um, if it were white, uh, my favorite variation would be the, the knight f4 sideline that we finished with. Um, 
But unfortunately, you know, white doesn't have to play knight e2 here. They can play queen to c1, where um, you just have to play knight g5 and trade, trade it off and uh, deal with some of these nuances here on the king side. But uh, yeah, thanks for the question. All right, do we have any more questions from the chat about any of the positions we saw tonight? Give it 30 seconds, and if I don't see anything, we're going to wrap it up here. Okay, DM is going back to that F3 line. Again, nothing to do with the Tarash, but very interesting. Um, F E4, Queen H4, King E2. Bishop takes C3. There, there is nothing on C3. I'm confused now. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Um, D takes E4, Knight C3, Bishop B4. I understand. I missed a move. Here, Queen H4, King E2. Um, so now the Knight is protecting. Bishop, Pawn, Pawn falls, King F2. I don't even know what to say about this position. No game found in the Masters database. In the Lee Chess database, this has been played about 100 times, and black goes knight f6. Bishop d3, queen goes to c6. Now, the engines are just saying black is better. I'm inclined to believe it, because white's king looks weird here. But it looks like white has survived most of these games and has a plus score. So who knows? Maybe it's a practical weapon. This may be something to look at for an openings lecture in the future. Okay, do we have anything else about the Tarash French? If it's not the Tarash, I'm going to gonna have to skip over it. We'll get to it another time. But uh, uh, I think that's all it from chat. So we're going to... Wrap it up here. Thanks for coming to Openings Explained. This was the Tarash French. I'm Nick Risco. Again, thanks for stopping by. We're going to hop over onto Twitch and solve some tactics. Uh, I'll see you guys over there.